Hey y'all, in this episode that you're about to hear, Cecilia and I both sing the praises of the film Birds of Prey, which is currently in theaters as of this recording. To meet ethical business practice standards, I'm required to disclose that Cecilia and I both work for the company that produced and distributed this film. Thanks and enjoy the episode. Sing your sixth grade math teacher a pirate shanty and set your brain to shuffle. Tis time for Randomize. Y'all get excited. It's time for Randomize, your source for the most random topics that humanity needs to hear. As always, I'm your host, JR, and I'm joined today by my humble co-host, some might say the most humble co-host, Cecilia Montalvo. Cecilia, what's up today? I, you know, I'm feeling really humble today after that introduction. (laughs) I'm feeling really humble. (laughs) So um, I heard some rumblings that you have some awesome, crazy story to share with the world. And I just have to hear it. Your latest and greatest experience. I do have to share. I have something to share today. So this past weekend was my friend's birthday. And it was a little bit of a surprise situation. Surprise for her. But we knew it was going down all along. But I will say the way that the night ended up going was something that we didn't, you know, couldn't have experienced. Wait, wait. So were you planning this, the shindig? Yes. The well, sure, sure. Sure. I was part, I was, I, I knew what was going on. Oh my God. So essentially I love it. the idea was, is that it was my friend's birthday. For her birthday, we would be going to a karaoke bar. Super oh, fun. Awesome. Never been to one of those before. I was really excited. Was it K-pop karaoke? Uh, yes, that's what we found out when we got there. Oh no! But <laughs> the the whole kind of catch and twist to this fun karaoke night was that we were all going to go in our pajamas. It was essentially a pajama <laughs> party to a karaoke bar. That's and so cool. we, I had, I got these really comfortable pajamas for Christmas. They're like pink and purple tie dye, and they're so fuzzy. I was so excited to wear them. I had these sneakers that have the <laughs> same exact color scheme and was matching them like almost exactly. I was so excited. There's a group of maybe about 10 of us girls yeah. all dressed in pajamas. I just want to say that I don't ever want to go out again if it's not in my pajamas. Oh I think my gosh. that experience really changed everything for me. And um, that's just the only way I think that you should ever leave your house, period, for fun, for not fun, for celebration, pajama party only. Hey, you know, I'm going to add to that further. I think wearing pajamas at all times is important, even like in places like the shower. When, when <laughs> traditionally pajamas aren't allowed, I would say you should always be rocking your pajama pants. It's just, it's just the most comfortable way to live life. I think so, too. And I think if you can find some cute pajamas like I had or like some of my friends had. It sounds like you were 60s chic because like, it was it was tie-dye. You, know, you had your tie-dye effect going with your with your tie-dye shoes. That's... It could have. It could have been perceived as that. One of my friends had zebra pajamas on. Another of my friends <laughs> had one with little pugs on them. We were looking cute. Oh, my cute. gosh. The pugs. The pugs. We went to this <laughs> karaoke bar. It was a lot of fun. Surprise. A lot of it was in Korean. We couldn't really understand how to make it. <laughs> to make the menu work, but oh, we no. still had a good time in our pajamas regardless. So, so since y'all didn't speak Korean whatsoever, did y'all like lip sync the whole time? So we eventually were able to get someone who worked there to help us out to figure yes. out <laughs> the few English songs that they did have. So we had some fun with Britney Spears, but um, a couple of my friends did take a swing at the K-pop. Okay, it's a question. Mm-hmm. What do you think? And there is a right answer to this, Cecilia. Okay, okay. I think you know this already. <laughs> you know my answer to this. What is the quintessential Britney Spears tune? If you didn't had to pick you one. Say, didn't you say it was Toxic by Britney Spears? No, that's wrong, wrong answer. No, I Close know. second. It's the close second. I remember this was the whole thing. I forget. That's that's what we sang, though. We did sing Toxic, and that was my suggestion. Toxic is a great song, but it comes into a close second to the obvious choice here, which is Lucky by Britney Spears. Yes, of course, Lucky. I remember. So, so... I've worked at Warner Brothers for about three and a half years, and it has taken three and a half years of thorough convincing all my teammates that Lucky is the best Britney Spears song. People are still holding out, but I'm slowly chipping away at the iceberg. Eventually, all my coworkers are just going to agree with me, like Lucky is the hands down best Britney Spears song. You know, you have made a really strong case to me before about (laughs) Lucky being the quintessential Britney Spears song. I don't disagree, but I feel like the quintessential Britney Spears song that is in my heart is toxic. That just like in karaoke, it was just the first thing that came to my mind. I I had to I had to just put it up for the group. It was that one. That one was our group karaoke song that we did. So whenever you sang toxic, did you like 
feel like you became Britney Spears Absolutely. in that moment? Absolutely. In a karaoke bar, duh, of course. A Korean karaoke <laughs> of bar of all places. Course. You you felt you were the essence of Britney Spears in that moment. Absolutely. I knew that she was her spirit was with us that night. Well, I think we should get on to some random topics. Cecilia, um, what's your what's your first random topic? I, I can see that you're you're really excited about sharing it. So yeah, this is this is a topic that essentially came out of another experience I had last week. Yeah. So last week I saw Birds of Prey, the new movie yes. about Harley Quinn. Loved it. It was great. Really good. It was really entertaining. I laughed a lot. Can't ask for anything more when yep. you watch the movie. Something that I found really funny, a part of the movie, spoiler alert slightly, is that she has a hyena as a pet. It was best pet A hyena, ever. a literal hyena best in pet. her apartment, her mm -hmm. tiny little gross apartment <laughs> that lived in a bathtub. <laughs> hilarious they were the best of friends best laugh ever best laugh, i love of course. i'm obsessed with the hyena's laugh of course it was one of the best parts of the movie it really and was. there's a lot of great parts in that movie by the way agreed so it got me thinking about essentially the best animal to domesticate as a pet and of course Ooh. assuming that the living conditions that you would be able to provide for this pet would be of course humane and would of course take care of all their needs there's this in a, in a world where we could be, yeah. we could have a Harley Quinn with a pet hyena, what pet do you think that you would most likely want to domesticate? Can I tweak your question of to course. be, what would be my ideal animal sidekick to go on of like, crazy course. adventures that with? Is, that is, yes, that's like, way better than the question that I asked. Because because I, I'm thinking, what animal do I want to take with me on road trips to be like my sidekick and, and getting like crazy zany adventures with? Of course. You know? Um, well, of course, if you're going to domesticate an animal, you have to do it for that purpose. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking about this answer, and I think I have the right response here. I'm thinking I'd want a wallaby. All right. A wallaby. For those of you who don't know what a wallaby is, a wallaby is basically like a miniature um, kangaroo. Uh, it gets to maybe two feet tall. <laughs> it's like it's like a baby kangaroo its whole life, and it's adorable. It just hops around your house. I'm thinking it could be easily go with me on camping trips. I could actually create a sling, throw it in my sling while I'm going hiking. And like its head's just poking out, watching the world as I walk. It'd be the best sidekick. Plus, if I ever get in some like danger, it could like kick somebody. Because, you know, like kangaroos have pretty fierce kicks. Yes. You know, and they're pretty fierce. Having a miniature version of that. It's, to, the, like, best of, it's the best of all worlds, having a miniature one. Because it's cute and it can't yes. cause danger to you or your home. <laughs> exactly. And I feel like it would be like a really awesome pet to have. Um, it would be an adorable sidekick for you. <laughs> plus, plus, I mean, the ears are cute. And but. The, the way that they, they walk by hopping is just unbelievable. It is. It is. I'm really picturing it. I can really see that for you. I'll share what mine is. Mine is also in a perfect world where I am not deathly allergic to cats. Oh, no. Deathly is maybe a little bit drastic. I am but so allergic to you. I, so allergic. I recently, at this, <laughs> at this pajama party, I had an experience where I was allergic to her, not her cat, but her dog, who lives at her friend's house for a lot of the time, also lives with a cat. Oh, no. The cat was not present, just the dog, and I was having an allergic reaction. That's how allergic I am to That's cats. That's terrible, Cecilia. So terrible. what I'm about to say is not, not going to really make any sense, but I would love to domesticate a lion. I was waiting for you to say lion. I was like, what is the biggest possible cat for Cecilia to have? The biggest cat, the oh kings of the jungle, the kings and the queens of the jungle. They are just such gorgeous creatures. And I've seen these videos on the internet of these animal trainers who have, you know, spent a long time yeah. with a pack of a pack of these cats and has really raised them for a long time. And they <laughs> accept him as one of their own into their pack. It's so beautiful. I've cried watching Instagram oh, no. videos of this man being like loved by these lions. And I just think they're so beautiful and having one that like just like the hyena in the bathtub, having one, you know, live in your house could be so so cute, right? Going back to the the allergy thing, I like to picture you having this animal even with the allergies. Oh I my feel gosh. like I feel like it could be twenty yards away and you'd be just like sneezing and like your eyes watering. Just it's a huge cat, a tiny cat. little house cat that was literally not even present at the apartment that I was at was giving me an allergic reaction. I cannot imagine what a ginormous cat that weighs more than I do. It would kill you. It would kill me. You would die. Cecilia. It wouldn't even you have would, to get near dead. me. It would not <laughs> bear its claws or its teeth, nope. and I would just go into anaphylactic shock. It would show your love. It's love to you, and and you'd probably die. <laughs> Yeah. You know, now here's the thing. 
going back to you, the situation of you not being allergic to it, mm-hmm. let's pretend you had this lion. Yes. Would you ride it to work every day? Because how, um, what a statement to be made to ride an actual lion to work every day. People, that would be so epic. People on the on the streets would be like, I'm I'm stopped at a red light behind a lion and there's a lady riding it. That and would she looks be awesome. so epic. I would be riding my lion on the street waiting at the stoplight and then you would pull up next to me with your wallaby <laughs> in the in the drive in the in the passenger seat. I think my wallaby would be pretty nervous being next to that lion. <laughs> probably would. <laughs> it would probably, probably hide would. in its pouch. I agree. I agree. <laughs> One last question. What would you name your lion? Mm. I'm thinking Jethro would be a great name Jethro. for a lion. <laughs> Jethro the lion. I'm thinking something more, more. I, I feel like the first thing that came to my to my mind is Nala. You got to pay respect to the to the gotcha. OG queen of the jungle. Oh, so it'll be a female lion. Yes. That was, that's what I was picturing the whole time. They're actually more fierce. They are more fierce. I, nope. I just watched Planet Earth. They're the ones getting it done. No one would mess with you, Cecilia. You wouldn't need an ADT system at all if you no. had a female lion. Like, I agree. It would be better than any 80 <laughs> no system. No one would mess with me. It'd be amazing. All right. So are you ready for my, yes. my random uh, topic? It's actually, it's time. yeah, it's, it's another would you rather. So, of course. Which are swiftly becoming my specialty, I think, on this podcast. I'm getting inspired by your would you rather. Yes. The day that you bring up a would you rather, I'm going to be so proud, Cecilia. All right. Just, be... w- just wait for, <laughs> just wait for what's coming. Next episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's my would you rather. Because we work at WB, I feel like I've been promoting a lot of DC superheroes lately, and my world has been superheroes, Mm -hmm. so this naturally came to the forefront of my mind when thinking today about what would this would you rather be. So, which of these two scenarios would you rather live in, Cecilia? Okay. The first one is, would you rather be famous as the only person in the world who has superpowers, but you have the superpowers of a snail, and your superhero name is snail-based, and you're the butt of all the jokes in the national headlines, even after saving the world. Like people still make fun of you for your for, for having snail powers. Mm-hmm. Or the second option is, would you rather be famous as the only person in the world without superpowers? And everyone else has awesome, like super awesome super abilities. And you're still the butt of all the jokes in national headlines for being the only person in the world without superpowers. Quick Quick points of clarification. When I say on the second part that people have awesome superpowers, I'm talking like they can move things with their mind. They can fly anywhere they want. Legit superpowers. Legit superpowers. On the first situation, snow powers, you're like, you look like yourself, but you have a big like shell on your back and you can like, you have the goop, like the slime and you can go up walls with slime very slowly. But you do save the world, but people don't. People still give you a hard time about being a snail, even after like risking your life and saving the world for humanity. I first of all, I just want to say how inspiring that <laughs> would you rather situation is. Wow, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer to this, but I think it got to be the only one without superpowers. Oh, you wouldn't choose the snail powers? I don't think I could choose the snail powers. <laughs> I don't think I could be the butt of a joke for for having powers and saving people. Like, mm. I'm saving you people. I'm not your joke. So it just make you mad and angry all the it time. It would. It would. <laughs> then, but then if I was the only one without superpowers and everyone thought I was lame anyways, at least my life would be safe. Here's the extent of it, though. Like, either which way you choose, the way I see it is, the national media is going to make fun of you mm-hmm. for, for either way. No I mean, help. no, no, seriously, like a typhoon's going to hit some country and wipe out hundreds of thousands of people. And at the very end, the news anchor is going to be like, this is a lame event to happen, but not as lame as Cecilia, who has no powers. <laughs> oh, and then he flies away from his desk. No. You know, and that's how he ends his, 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 his news topic. However, you, to your point, when you're the snail, no one gives you credit. Like you probably will end up saving the world once a month. And the natural for headlines, all these an- ungrateful humans, ungrateful humans, you're going to be like, like literally the news stories will be, and Cecilia the snail saves the world again. Right. Um, thanks for nothing. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for being a snail person. Right. <laughs> yeah. I know. I think if I'm going to be in the news, I might as well just keep a low profile, you know, just <laughs> let everyone do their thing. I'll be the one that they save. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, look, Superman saved Cecilia w- <laughs> uh, once again for for her lame humanness, you know. Oh, I'm like, well, at least I'm, at least I'm so around. But it's going to be really sad when all your friends, like, if you go to a party, like, 
K-pop again, you know, mm-hmm, do like a, mm-hmm. a cool K-pop party. Um, they're all going to just fly to the destination and they're waiting for you to just walk there. It's going to be <laughs> kind of inconvenient all the time. Oh, no, it really is going to have a hindrance on my social life, probably. Yes, big impact. So are sure. you saying that you would rather be the superhero, the snail superhero? Listen, I'd rather be the snail superhero, and this mm-hmm. is why. At the end of the day, whenever I die and a tombstone is put up over my body, at least it'll say, here rests J.R. the snail, he saved the world, dot, 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 but who really cares? At least the first part will be there. Oh. Like, I can claim, <laughs> I can claim that it's I worth saved it. the world. Like, who in, who can claim they saved the world? I mean, you can be the butt of every single joke, but if you can claim that you saved the world, that's special. You know what, J.R., I actually can't picture a scenario or a story where you would take the option of not being superior. I think it's just your destiny. It I has think, to. I think... I think that's exactly what what makes sense in that tombstone. Yeah, but, but if you think about it, like if you had the shell on your back, if, if you're ever cold outside and you need like you know warm up, you can crawl into your shell. Mm-hmm. You know, you can climb the sides of buildings. It's kind of cool. You're basically like um, any superhero that can climb walls, but it's a little bit slower. It's a little bit slower. A little, little bit slower. slimier. <laughs> a little slimier. But at least you're doing it. No one else is. And no one's gonna walk behind you. Final question on this, Cecilia. Mm-hmm. If you did, if you were forced to become the, the snail superhero, mm-hmm. which of these four superhero names would you choose from? Okay. Super snail, snail woman, snail girl, or Cecilia the snail? <laughs> oh no! All of these, all of these make the idea that you're already the butt of the joke almost yes. worse. One hundred percent. It makes it so much worse. But you have to choose. Um. I think super snail because that's this the fun that was an option right? Yeah, okay, I was like that's, super snail. That's the funniest one. Yeah. Snail girl, snail woman, whatever. Super snail. Like look at this super snail over super here. Super snail over here. <laughs> I do kind of feel like these could like hit during different phases of your life. Like mm. you could be snail girl, you know, from from when you were born when to like age seventeen, mm-hmm. and then once you turn eighteen, you could be snail woman, and then for like that, you know, kind of like moderately cool phase when you're in college and people are starting to embrace you, you could be super snail. <laughs> But then once people are like, you know what, we're over it, then they'll start calling you Cecilia the Snail. Cecilia the Snail. That's got to be the worst one. That's got to <laughs> be the one that, that's the one that they will put on my tombstone to make fun of me for. Well, the problem with it is adding the into it. So the snail, the snail. they are saying you're not even half human. You're you're like you're all snail. You're the snail. Exactly. We don't even care that you're super. You're just no, the snail. You're the snail. Mm-hmm. All right. What's your next topic? I'm I'm, I'm curious. Well... This was going to be a would you rather. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but okay. I don't know if it can stand. This one is a very, it's a very. I think we should do it still. It's one on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's it's like a, it's a bad versus bad. Which one is the lesser of yeah. two evils essentially? Oh gosh. I hate these. <laughs> it's, it's, this is one of the worst things I've ever thought of. Let's, let's picture that you are, you don't have a car. You don't have any method of transportation yeah. ever. You have to walk everywhere for the rest of your life. You're on your feet. You're on the go from A to B just by foot. That's the only option you got. Gotcha. Which I'm kind of like that now because Ashley always uses the car. Right. So I'm on foot <laughs> okay. all the time. You're That's on foot. Just, you're, you're speaking to my life right now, Cecilia. All right, JR. <laughs> you're not going to like what I'm about to say. Oh, you're on foot all the time. Oh, man. Which one of these is the worst situation mm-hmm. to be on foot? I'm wondering if I've been in these situations. For an extended before. period of time, you probably have. Yeah. Wet having wet socks. Oh, that's the worst. Or two small shoes, closed-toed shoes, Gosh. laces, the whole thing. Too small or thick wet socks. Can I have both as both at the same time? No. No. Because that so would probably help one. the situation. <laughs> Which one? Well-fitting shoes. You got to walk miles. You got to walk miles. How many miles are you saying here? Like, like two miles. 15? Something, something reasonable. So two, let's say you're walking two miles to the grocery store, picking up a bunch of stuff, two miles back, carrying so all carry of it. carry things back? Yeah, oh it's my a, gosh, it this it is a worse. walk of walks. This is an efficient walk. And you either have wet socks or your shoes are too small. Okay, question. Can my super soggy socks have like a cool design on them, like 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 a hamburger design? They can be whatever. They can, they can look however. Okay, I'm going with the cool socks with the hamburgers <laughs> on them. 
Even though I don't they're eat red meat. They're sopping wet. They're sopping wet. I'm going but with the sopping wet just because they have a cool design on them. I will say that uh, I went to a climbing gym with my my niece mm -hmm. when I went back home for a little bit mm -hmm. uh, over the break. And I have to say, wearing those specialty climbing shoes, <laughs> it was fun. It was great when you're climbing on the walls, but when you're walking around and your feet are cramped, it hurts. They're right. Yeah. No. No yeah, way. So, so the super soggy hamburger socks, I'm in all <laughs> day long. What's your answer? I think I have to agree. I was I was inspired to think about this topic recently because I bought a pair of shoes not too long ago that yeah. I loved and adored so much, but it didn't take it took me about a month to realize that they're too small. I love they're not oh, even no. that old, but they are too small. Wait, so how do you not realize it until a month? Was it like calcis or something? Yes, because I tried some on in the store was unclear on the size ordered them online forgot which size i decided oh, no. i needed in the store <laughs> started to notice they were too small because not even because of the callus not even because you know you could start to see your toes popping out or anything this feeling of having your foot cramped so hard so just squished in when you're trying to get from point a <laughs> to point b is i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy gotcha, gotcha. i would wish wet socks on my worst enemy which is myself. regina george right <laughs> of course that is your worst of enemy course. regina george one. might deserve two small shoes she might do you know what would be a great prank if there's someone who's just very evil and mean to you what if you buy like five five of the same pair of shoes and keep switching out their shoes for a smaller pair. A smaller and smaller pair just keep going down they're, they're, in size. Yeah, and like in their heads, like, oh my gosh, are my, is my feet growing bigger? Like, what's going on? Like, they'll start to freak out. I think, yes, that's that's how grossed out I am by yeah two small shoes. The wet yeah. socks, maybe maybe you can survive with that. Your feet are gonna be pretty messed up, but at least you're not in pain. They'll be very pruney after that's for sure. True. That's <laughs> very true. Super pruney feet. That's exactly true. Um, interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. So are you ready for my last topic? Yes. I I think we need to move on from from those topics that are too painful to <laughs> consider painful. any longer. <laughs> okay. So my topic is what famous person who lived prior to the advent of cell phones would you want to go back in time and take a selfie with? Mm. Just like gut response. Four what is it? Who is it? Cell phones. Oh gosh, gut response, that's not even coming up to me because I'm trying to think about when the cell phone was created. <laughs> You're like, Man, I don't the know camera? any famous people before, <laughs> before 15 years ago. <laughs> Who was famous back then? Right, was there, did people, were people even famous back then? How'd you get famous before there, were there cell phones? <laughs> were there people before phones? Right. That's the question we need to ask How ourselves. How did people even know about each other <laughs> beforehand? Okay, before cell phones were famous. Well, I feel like one of the most, one of the original famous people, one of the original people to like reach intense fame was our our beloved Julie, Judy Garland. Like oh, that'd back be a good then, one. if you had a, a selfie with Judy Garland, yes. everyone would be like, how, how, how did you get that? How yes. did you see her? She was the name. She was the Definitely. big name. You know, she was the first almost famous actress that there ever was. Now, can you imagine going back in time, taking a picture with Jodie Garland, a selfie, and then going back to our current time, posting it on Instagram, you'd get so much engagement there. So much you know? engagement. That would break the internet for sure. It would break Instagram. It would, it, it would, it would. Or people would just be thinking <laughs> that you took a picture with Renee Zellweger on set when she yes. shot Judy because she really did look That's true. uncanny. Now, now Judy was, was a good singer. So would you bring her to um, the K-pop place you went to sing? Oh my goodness. She would burn the house down. She would burn it down. And she'd sing Korean probably too. Probably. She'd probably know Korean and, and blow everyone away. Probably. I'm I'm curious to know what your what your answer is for this. Obvious answer, it's Napoleon, right? <laughs> so it would be I love how he is super short in stature. Mm -hmm. So there's an art form of taking a selfie. I'm not a good selfie taker. I take a selfie once every two years, probably. <laughs> right. But I have a good wise friend named Jerome who taught me the art of taking the perfect selfie. And, and there is an art. And it's all in the, the angle of your arm. Mm -hmm. So I think having him there angling the arm up so dramatically would be kind of fun. That would be amazing perspective. You would really know yes. how short that man was. Yes. And I think it's awesome because he always wears very tall hats. If you see all the pictures in, I just want a picture with a, of the person with a cool hat. 
All right. Mm. So give me either Napoleon or Abraham Lincoln. Like I could wear a top hat with Honest Abe and take a picture. I would love that would be the best selfie ever. That would be epic. Like Jr. and, and Honest Abe wearing top hats together <laughs> back in the 18, you know, 60s yes. rocking top hats. But going back to Napoleon, the second reason, not only because of his stature and mm-hmm. his or third reason, not only because of his stature and his cool hats, mm-hmm. he always rode horses in mm. all those paintings of him. I just want a selfie as a, someone on a horse. Right. So oh, yeah. to have the horse in this selfie too, like his, you know, its face. Napoleon's horse. In yeah. So, so, so it'd be a three person selfie. It'd be myself, Napoleon and Napoleon's horse, of course. So His horse, of course. No, yeah. I agree. I think that would be extremely epic. Extremely. You went a little bit farther than past the cell phone. You went, <laughs> you went, did they even have electricity? I'm just kidding. They had, they had some, some things back then. I'd probably whis- whisper in Honest Abe's ear, like, don't go to the theater tonight. <laughs> and then I'd probably be like, Napoleon, just stop while you're ahead. Of that's, course. That's what I would you would have him. to go back in time with a plan. You couldn't just let these people, let these people live their lives and just take a selfie and leave them. These, you gotta warn them. These selfies would totally like change history. Like I'd come back oh, to my current yes. time and it'd be like a back to the future situation where like the world's completely different because Napoleon never lost and Abraham Lincoln was never assassinated. And the world's completely different. I, I agree. And I think not only would it change the course of history in that way, but it would take the honor away from Paris Hilton from inventing the selfie. <laughs> she invented the selfie, as we all know, but then J. they would R. have Honest to... Abe will have invented it. <laughs> then and they Napoleon. would have to go back to the era of Napoleon or Honest Abe, whichever whichever time that your time machine lands yes. and say like, no, this, this was the first selfie. How amazing would it be if Napoleon's horse got credit for, for having the first selfie? Yes, that would be amazing. Sorry, Paris Hilton. Sorry, Sorry Paris. You don't, you're, you don't out. It, you're out. <laughs> Napoleon's horse is in. The horse is in. Well, I think that's everything for today. Thank you all for tuning in to Randomize. We're super glad that we're able to talk about these super random topics with y'all. Um, be sure to tune back in next week for our next episode. And that's it, y'all. Have a great day. See ya. Hey, y'all, thanks for tuning in to Randomize. If there's a super random topic that you think should be discussed on this podcast, please email us at randomizepodcast at gmail.com. Also, I got to throw out a quick disclaimer. As myself, Cecilia, and many of our guests are employees at Warner Brothers and Warner Media, I want to reinforce that everything said in this podcast is a reflection of our own personal views and does not reflect the views of Warner Brothers, Warner Media, or any of its other parent or sister companies or other affiliated entities. Take care, y'all, and stay random.